getting a little bit more of a <laughs> intimate setting tonight. Uh, so I'm, I'm in, I live in New York and today we had uh, the tropical storm come through and knock our power out. So we have, we have no power. We haven't had it for about six or seven hours. Not sure exactly when it's coming back, but, uh, for those that don't know, maybe that have just started watching the videos, uh, I, I have a goal to make one video a night for a year straight. And I just looked back and I actually started on April 6th. So we're almost exactly four months in and I was not going to let a storm or a power outage stop us. So uh, doing a video tonight with the candlelit setting. So apologies on that. Um, the topic I thought I'd cover tonight is one that I've had on my mind for a while, but I figured I'd delve into it tonight. I've mentioned in other videos that uh, I refer to myself as a recovering people pleaser, uh, meaning that for much of my life, I've spent a lot of energy and effort and mental resource trying to simply put, get people to like me. Um, I don't think I've done it in like a super blatant way where like I need to be the most popular person all the time and I need everybody to think, you know, I'm the greatest. It's more removing the negative. Right? I, I like to minimize friction as best I can. I probably, more than I need people to like me, is I need people not to dislike me. Um, I never want somebody to walk away from a conversation with me, or at least historically, thinking like, uh, I don't know about that guy, or he seems like kind of a jerk, or he seems like whatever, which seems, you know, intuitive. Most people probably don't want that, but the extent I've gone to to make sure that people don't think that is probably overkill. Um, and again, you know, spent a lot of my life kind of people pleasing in that way, uh, in conversations, in communications, uh, in all sorts of different settings, trying to go above and beyond to make sure that people understand I'm not trying to offend. Um, I'm not trying to insult them in any way. And probably the biggest way in which I do that, uh, through written communication, whether it be text or, you know, Slack at work or emails or even social media to an extent, uh, is the use of a, a simple phrase, uh, ha ha, literally H-A-H-A. -A -H -A. uh, I probably use that phrase, or whatever you would call it, more than anything else. Um, and sometimes I use it in its intended form, where I'm literally just laughing at something. Um, but much, much more often, I use it as a way to try and disarm uh, protect or ensure that people know I'm not trying to offend them. I'm not trying to insult them. It's become probably my number one tool through written communication to continue that people pleaser, make sure people don't dislike me, um, thing that I have. And it's probably the thing that's stuck around, right? So it's, I, I say recovering people pleaser because I think this journey that I've been on the last few years has helped me to see the value in trying to be more direct with people, be more honest, still not trying to offend, obviously, but just how inefficient it is and illogical to spend so much mental energy and resource trying to ensure that people don't have a problem with you is, is silly to me. Now, so I've, I've gotten a lot better than, at that, but in written communication, uh, I find myself still saying, ha ha, often. Uh, and I've had people call me out on it, you know, friends, family, um, acknowledging like, hey, I see you, you do that a lot, and particularly in certain settings where it might get a little contentious, that I use that often to, to send a signal like, hey, I come in peace, no, no, no problems here. Um, so I, I, I'm trying to, I guess, be better in that regard too. Uh, the way my brother said to me was, you know, mean what you say, say what you mean, right, that phrase. And if you do that, you shouldn't have to say, ha ha, before or after, in the middle of anything that you're telling somebody. Um, if you're thoughtful in your words and you mean what you're saying, there should be no reason to caveat it. There should be no reason to protect it. And I think that's true. Um, and it's a simple enough thing to adjust, right? It's, it's, it's an obvious flag when I write it to say like, hey, take that out. What's interesting about it is mentally, emotionally, <laughs> what it does to me, right? The idea of taking it out uh, in some ways terrifies me. The idea of writing something that might be a little bit contentious or at least could be interpreted as such, or, you know, when the, when the, when the dialogue is a little bit, you know, contentious or strained or heated, to not have that safety net there, to not be able to say that seems like, well, that's, that's insane. Um, 
what if what if they misinterpret? What if they think I'm extreme in one direction or that I'm trying to, you know, insult them or that I'm being kind of a jerk or that I'm being too harsh? It's 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 literally um a terrifying thought for me. The the idea of putting something out there it's probably the the biggest issue I have with written communication. I struggle with it a lot because it is so hard to be a people pleaser in written communication, um, to really try and ensure it. So I also find that I tend to be very you know, verbose. I tend to say a lot when I write things out, whether it be a text or an email or again, what have you, because for the same reason, I wanna make sure they understand. I wanna explain thoroughly that this is what I mean to minimize any misinterpretation of it. Um, so sometimes I use a lot of words, but more often than not, in addition to that or on its own, I throw in the ha ha. So much in the spirit of what we've been talking about, you know, you, you can think of that as there's a calculation that I'm doing. Um, and there's some fear entering into that calculation when it comes to the ha ha, but I'm, I'm deciding every time, right? I'm doing what I want to do. I'm putting that ha ha in there. Um, it's something that I feel is necessary. So part of me says, rip the bandaid off, right? Just, just tell yourself you cannot use it anymore. Um, and I think, again, it's, it's a straightforward enough thing where I could probably do that. Um, you know, and, and having, obviously having to try and ensure that I don't put LOL or some other phrase that tries to convey the same thing. But I think it's a simple enough thing to say that, to say, hey, I'm just going to cold turkey stop using that, um, in that in that form. Um, but I also wonder, you know, and, and think, as I often do, that when it comes to something like this, you should get in the mud, as I like to say, and understand like, why is that phrase so critical to me? What is it exactly that it's doing for me that, you know, logically I keep coming out on the side that I need to keep using it? And the obvious answer is, well, you're a people pleaser, right? But I know that already. And I know that that's inefficient and silly, and I, and I try and stop doing it in most other forms of communication. So what is it about the written communication? And again, you might say, well, you just explained it. Written communication is that much harder. True, true. But I, I'd like to pride myself on being, you know, a logical, rational, thoughtful person that says, yeah, it's harder, but you could still do it. And it's still valuable to mean what you say and say what you mean. So what is it that's really stopping me, right? What is it that's really causing me to include those ha-has as often as I am? What's the why behind the why? What's the next level why as to why I'm still doing it when it comes to written communication? Um, and there's probably some aspect of it where, as I said, a recovering people pleaser, I'm not fully there yet. And that's a harder thing to get over. Um, it's, it's the risk is greater. And there's still a part of me that feels compelled to protect myself and protect my image in front of other people. Um, I think that's certainly a big chunk of it. I just haven't fully gotten over it. I, I keep saying in these videos that I'm a recovering people pleaser, but maybe I'm not as much as I'd like to think that I am. Uh, and this is evidence of that. So the inconvenient truth that I'm trying to avoid facing is, hey, you're not, you're not there yet. You still have a lot of work to go. Um, and this is, this is the perfect example of it. And again, I think, I think that's true. I think there's some truth to that, that, that I can't get over it. Because if I really think about it, when I do use the phrase, um, it's probably also, oftentimes when I do it, it's not just in a direct one-to-one -one conversation. It can be at times, but more often than not, it's on social media, it's in a group text, you know, a group Slack, something like that, where there's other people included. And I do think that adds to it. I think part of it is um, this, this whole thinking better process. A big component of it is trying to, as I say all the time, be the change you want to see in the world. And part of that is not reacting emotionally, not getting defensive, but trying to learn, um, trying to understand other people's views. So I think there is a component of that where it's, it's very similar to people pleasing, but it's a little bit different. It's, it's the way in which I try and convey the message to a group of people that, um, hey, I'm not, I'm not going against what I preach. I'm not taking an extreme view. I'm not being argumentative. Like I truly am trying to learn. So I put the haha -ha there to like help make that clear that that's what I'm doing. Um, I do think there is certainly a component of that that is involved, right? When you're, when you're speaking live again, you can convey that much more clearly just through your body language or just the inflection in your voice and the tone, the ability to pause and let somebody speak 
it all sends a message that, hey, I'm, I'm learning here. I'm trying to understand. I'm not jumping to conclusions. When you're going back and forth in a text exchange, it's very, you know, exactly that. Like you're lobbing a tennis ball back and forth. So when you go, you go. Um, and it's harder to convey that message that you're learning and that you're listening. And I guess I just equated this haha as a way to make that clear, right? To, to soften it, to lighten it. And when I do, I guess, I guess the other piece is when I do, when I do use it most, it's when I'm asking a probing question, when I am making kind of a poignant point that um, maybe gets to the heart of a matter or maybe is getting to the root of an issue. And I recognize there's going to be sensitivity around that. Um, and again, in person on the phone, you can address that. But in a text, in a communication like that, I, I, I have a sense that the person is going to react to that just naturally. They make it defensive. It's, it's a sensitive subject. It's something that's delicate to them in some way. And I feel like I need to shrink wrap it a little bit and protect it. Um, and that's probably also a very big component of why I do it, which again is tied to people pleasing, but, but slightly different. And I think my people pleasing skills allow me to identify when those moments are coming up and the typical things I would do to disarm somebody and stop them from getting defensive. The problem is it's counterproductive. Um, it's inefficient and it can stop you from having the important conversation, getting to the point you need to get to. So I think ultimately it's something that I need to stop doing. Um, and I need to address it in an actual way, right? I need to find the right words to say to still not offend and still make it a learning conversation and make that clear, but not using that crutch of the ha ha. Um, I think that's an important thing for, for me to do just to, it'll show a bit of an evolution. It'll show that I'm developing the skills to articulate points and have conversations without having to rely on these simple tools to do it. Uh, and you might say like, hey, what's the big deal? Just just throw the haha in there. And, and my answer to that would be, it makes it very difficult. It's, it, it does its intended purpose. It makes it difficult for the other person to interpret um, that in, in a particular way, right? It removes some of the seriousness of it. But oftentimes it is a serious question or it is a serious point that I'm trying to make. So it's counterproductive to that. Um, if I'm putting in the ha-ha and now the person feels like, oh, maybe he doesn't really mean it. Maybe he's just making a lighthearted joke, but I'm not. I'm actually trying to make an important point and that takes away from it. So that's the reason why I think it's important to address. And I think, you know, part of the value of these videos is exactly this. I, this, this perhaps was a little bit rambly and kind of working through my own thoughts, but I think it's an example of what we need to do more of, right? You identify something that you're really not sure is the best thing that you're doing. You need to go through the conversation with yourself and figure out, hey, why am I doing it? Why am I really doing it? What's the next level why? Um, what can I do to fix it? Do I need to fix it? Would this actually address it? You know, and, and you really work through the process. And for me, this is this is super helpful. So hopefully a little bit interesting to kind of see how I would think through something like this and something that I'm trying to change about my behavior or my actions.